Hi guys, in this video, I go over the for loop. I explain the syntax and I go over an example. Let's start out with the syntax. The for loop starts with the for keyword followed by three parts in parentheses. The first part is an initialization part followed by a semicolon, then a condition followed by a semicolon, and then an update statement. If this condition is true, the statements in the following code block are executed. Now, there's a certain order to, to the execution of these parts. At first, the initialization part is executed, then the condition is checked. If the condition is true, it will execute the statements in the code block, and following that, it will perform the update statement. Then it will check the condition again. If it's still true, it will execute the statements and then perform the update step again. So this, these three parts here are happening counterclockwise. It will always check the condition, execute the statements, and perform the update step. Check the condition again. If the condition eventually becomes false, it will continue execution after the for loop. Now, it's also important to mention that each of these parts are optional. So you could even write a for loop with semicolon, semicolon. This is valid syntax, but rarely, if ever, you want to do this. You typically always want to define all three parts. Let's go over an example. Let's say we want to output the values between 1 to 5. I declare a variable named i, then I write the for loop. I initialize i to 1. This is my very first value that I want to output. Now with the condition, I say, when do I want to continue outputting integers? And this is as long as i is less than or equal to 5. And since I want to output every individual integer, 1 and 2 and 3, after each output, I want to perform an update i by 1. So I put i++ plus plus here. Now in the code block, I put a printf statement, and I simply output the integer followed by a space, and that is it. At the end here, I write a printf statement with a line break. Now let's run this program and see what it outputs. So this outputted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the way this works, i was initialized to 1. So this is the first step that we did. Then it checked the condition. Checked is 1 less than or equal to 5. This is true. So it outputted 1 followed by a space. Then it went to perform the update statement. It incremented 1 by 1 which is now 2, so i is 2, check the condition again, 2 is less than or equal to 5, this is true, it outputs 2 followed by a space, increments 2 by 1, it's now 3, 3 is still less than 5, it outputs 3, increments 3 by 1, it's 4, now 4 is still less than 5, so it outputs 4 with a space, increments 4 by 1, which is now 5. 5 is still equal to 5, so this condition is still true. It outputs 5, increments five, i by 1, it's now 6, and 6 is not less or equal to 5. This is now false, and then it continues uh, execution after the loop. This outputs the line break here, and then the program ended. Now, this is how the for loop works. Now, for loops are very useful when you know the number of iterations before. You kind of know you want to start at a certain number, you want to go to another number, um, you know the range of numbers that you want to output. This is where the for loop is really useful. Now, the while loop is better used for when you don't know the number of iterations before. For example, when you want to validate user input, you don't know how, how many times it's going to run. With this, I exactly know I want to start at 1, I want to end at 5. Let's do another example. Let's say we want to output the values starting at 100 and down to 
zero. And we only want to output every third number. Now, we want to know the number that we start with. So I will be initialized to 100. When do I want to stop? I want to stop when it's zero. So the condition, with the condition, I have to define when I want to continue, not when I want to stop. And I want to continue as long as I is larger or equal to zero. So if I, uh, one thing that you have to be really watch out for, if you decrement, if you're going down, like in this case, um, that you have the right condition. Don't accidentally put something like less than or equal to, because this will continue running, uh, or it will not run uh, at all in the first first place. So most of the time, you're kind of going up uh, on the scale. But in this case, I'm going down, so I have to use larger or equal to 0. Now, I mentioned I want to output every third number. So this I reflect in my update statement. Here I do i minus equal, so I use the arithmetic compound operator, by 3. So I subtract 3 from whatever value uh, i currently holds. And here I simply output printf uh, d, and I output i. And then I can run this. So here I get the numbers. Um, this is the first loop, increments 1 to 5. And here I get 100, 97, 94, 91. So it goes from 100 all the way down to 1. And it only outputs every third number. And this is how the for loop works. Again, you don't really need to define a block like it did most of the time here, um, but you always want to do it. It's a good habit to define a block, even if you just have a single statement. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.